Dear everyone, uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, whenever you are. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with all the greetings that you are greeting one another with. And today is the second day of Eid for the Muslims, inshallah, after Ramadan. And may the happiness and joy of this Eid be shared. Uh, between Muslims and the Muslims in different parts of the world. Unfortunately, what we are observing nowadays in different countries, particularly in Syria, in Yemen, in Palestine, in different parts of Palestine, such as Gaza, uh, Jerusalem, the mosque, the Holy Mosque, and other places, Nablus, other places is uh, not very comforting scenes, unfortunately. May Allah give comfort to all the people who are suffering in these areas, as well as people of Rohingya, people of Uyghur, Rohingya Myanmar, Uyghur in China, people of Central African Republic, people of Democratic Republic of Congo, people of South Sudan, people of Gambia, Botswana, Lesotho, Uganda, Ghana, all those, Sierra Leone, all these countries and more, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, everywhere, Latin America, Colombia, Mexico, other places as well. May the Muslims in these countries uh, let them to enjoy the fruits of the raid together, to live together, inshallah, and in particularly with the people of Palestine. This is my second part of Fatfada, which was started a week ago, with uh, talking about the personal feeling of the poor people and their dreams of the widows and women and her needs, of the orphans, of the young children, of the poor family, of the field workers in different countries, as well as of the poor communities that we are supporting. Today, we are trying to talk about the relationship between my worship to my Lord, to my God, and my society. And what is the link between my worship and my contribution to my society. I thank Ali Shawa for preparing the presentation. And this talk has been delivered last Tuesday. It's on my YouTube. Anyone would like to listen it into Arabic, it's on the YouTube and on the Facebook as well. The philosophical idea behind the relationship between society on one hand belief and worship in another hand. Society that we create, that we live in, and that we protect. And our belief in our hearts, as well as our ibadah, and the relationship between the three. As I learned some proper teaching from the late Sheikh Muhammad Mutal Shara of Egypt, who died last century, in the late 80s, early 90s, I can't remember exactly the year. I'm just quoting some of his says. What I'm saying here to add on what he said before, but he is a scholar, I'm not a scholar. If our worship to God, to Allah, is not transformed into positive social services, or positive community action, we have seriously to question and review the reality of our belief in God. Belief is not something for me. Belief is something in me and being transformed into community action. If, if my belief, my worship to Allah or to my Lord, if I follow another faith, is not translated 
and to commit service and commit action, I have to question my belief and my worship. Belief for me is a dynamic, listen to this please, it's the dynamic, empowering movement, energizing the different corners of our life inside this, this sprawling universe. Belief is a dynamic, empowering movement, energizing the different corners of our life inside this sprawling universe, which was created by Allah for us to enjoy its goodness. This is belief. This belief, this kind of dynamic, empowering movement. As Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran in verse 77-78 in Surah Hajj, all you believe, all you who believe, bow down, bow down, bow down, prostrate yourselves to whom? To Allah, to the Lord, to God. Then adore your Lord and do good that you may prosper. I think in, in the translation, he forgot something like this. And the strive in the sake of God, the proper and the true strive. So Allah differentiate in between the ritual worship of Allah, which is should sujood, prostration and kneeling down and bowing down to Allah. And number one, doing good. Anything good that we do, if we have an intention that we are doing it for God, for Allah, it is a part of our worship. It's a part of our worship. Our food, our leisure, if it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to protect myself, to strengthen myself, even my relationship with my family, especially my wife, the matrimonial relationship, to protect myself from doing committing adultery, this is, this is a part of my worship. Any good action you do and you mention Allah and say, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is to be added as a part of our worship. The worship itself is the ritual one to you know the fasting, the prayer, the hajj, which is a pilgrimage, as well as the kalima and giving the zakat. But to, on top of this, we have other kind of worship from actually our social intervention and action to help people, which is in doing the goodness. Do good. What does it mean? It means strive in the sake of Allah properly. Al jihad is not only by gun, it's not only in the battlefield, in the war zone. Could be by word, by an article, by education, by guiding, by supporting, by fighting corruption, by fighting corrupt people, by training, by empowering, by building society. All these are kind of different kinds of things and more and more and more. In the good old days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Angel Jibril and he asked them to go and destroy one of the villages. Jibril alayhi salam came back to Allah and said, oh Allah, there's a man there. This man is very good, very good, very good. He is one of the righteous people that are weeping at the Sahar and uh, all night, standing all night to worship you. Fasting the whole day, giving sadaqah, giving zakah, giving, giving all these charities to people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, with him you start. How? Because he did not command with enjoining. He never enjoined good and forbid evil. He never enjoined good and forbid evil. Means that this belief in his heart is not translated into community action. What do I mean? What the means by enjoying good and forbidding evil? It's not only 
حلال and حرام of of adultery or حلال and حرام of drinking or حلال and حرام of of gambling or حلال and حرام of and حرام of killing or stealing. No, it's any reform act in the society to protect human beings, whether those human beings are Muslims or non-Muslims. Any action to protect the climate. Any action to educate people, to raise the awareness of people about their rights, their human rights, their social rights, their political rights. All this kind of al-amr al-ma'roof al-na'amankar to enjoin good and forbid evil. Start with him, because he did not do that. What is the concept of worship? that we are discussing now. Now I'm going to discuss worship, yani, ibadah, in Arabic, ibadah. Ibadah has to have, to have a manifestation. One of the manifestations in you is an observation. Ibadah, for the ulama mentioned, it is to observe Allah, to keep continuously observing Allah as if you see him. But if you don't see him, be sure that he sees you all the time. Sometimes people say that, how can they see Allah? Cannot see him physically. Even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi all the prophets, even Prophet Moses, Musa Alayhi Salaam, and he was shocked and fall down uh, unconscious when Allah asked him to look at the mountain. Seeing Allah is not seeing him physically, but to see him in the creatures, in different creatures that created the plants, the trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the birds, the insects, the rivers, the ocean, all those are creation of Allah. So you can observe Allah in his creation. The manifestation of our creation has, are five. Five. Five, five. That's why I keep calling this uh, series is actually for father five to five. Number one, the internal manifestation in on my inner soul and have good principles. Internal manifestation of my worship. What is this? Number one is uh, in this internal manifestation inside me. The process, it is the process of building our souls. The process of building our souls, of observing the growth of our souls and development of our souls. Building growth and developing our souls. Then followed by purification of our soul, Tazkiyah. Building, growing, or growth, uh, development, and purification four stages inside the heart, inside the mind, of the, of, uh, the soul of the man. Then after that, we'll ask Allah to give us guidance to create a vision for my family, for myself, for my community, for my society, for my country, for humanity. And number six is to ask Allah to let me be able to translate this vision into community service. Building Growing, developing, and purifying, purification of our souls, then creating a vision, and from there asking Allah after building these five manifestations of our souls to be able to translate our vision into action. This is the internal manifestation inside the human soul. There's external manifestation as well. What are this? They are man our manners with people, our behavior, and dealings, not only with people, with different creation. I could be, I could be angel when I deal with people, but I could be cruel and devil when I deal with water, with rivers, with uh, trees, with uh, animals, with birds, you know, like this kind of... Uh, uh, in, in Spain, which was actually, uh, they, they were actually chasing the, the, 
the, uh, the animals there in, 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 the, in the ring and uh, hurt, uh, hurting them, the, the ox, and uh, hurting them, and actually to, 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 let them to bleed, they die, torturing them. We call it in Arabic, Musarat, Tiran, but actually I don't know what they call it in, uh, in, in English, I forgot the name in English. And this actually, people enjoy seeing the torture of this animal. This is bad belief and bad reflection of the worship of the individuals. Or sometimes in the good old days, they used to bring the two rams uh, and sheep and fight one another till one of them killed the others, or the uh, the chicken to fight one another, or 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 all this kind. This is wrong. Or sometimes they used to bleed the animal, particularly cow or buffalo, to to, uh, to drink the, the blood and they, they actually they torture such animal. This is wrong. This extreme manifestation which is wrong. The third point, which is we talk about internal manifestation by worship inside the soul, external with the community. Then the third one, which is community mobilization manifestation. What does it mean? Of course, I'm a good man. People like me. I'm a good woman. People likes me. And I'm trying to sort my soul out inside. But what is next? Next is your community mobilization. Has to be seen. You have to be seen in action by building, which which means building the process of community building, community growth, community development, exactly like the internal manifestation. Then raising the awareness, empowering people, advocacy, then discovering the natural resources, then mobilization of resources. Six points the building the process of community development growth and community building the growth and development then raising the awareness okay, raising the awareness i gave the example of this and the empowerment this awareness and empowerment and advocacy i gave the example of this of the story of the Karnain. The Karnan, when he came to those people who knew nothing and are very ignorant, even dumb, when they would speak, and Yugug and Magu used to come to them every year to steal their crops and the cows, their animals, and to take their girls and run away with them. First thing he said, okay, I don't want anything from you. I'm going to empower you. You know this mountain? Go to the mountain. Make me this, this, this big chunks of, of, of iron. He did not know even that the mountain is covered by these big, big blocks of iron. And come with me to empower them, to build the furnaces, to melt the iron, to melt the copper, and to make the alloy. Then to help me, to protect you, community, to help me and make this war between you and Gug and Magug. So he told them that this is iron, blocks bring it, then he taught them to build the furnaces and with him to build the wall. Then he left them. So he, he empowered them and he raised awareness for them and he left them. Advocacy is when you stand up next to the people to protect the rights, as I mentioned earlier on. Then Allah will help you to discover. You keep, when you are working in the community, you go from advocacy to discover the resources of your community. There's no community, no places on earth, no country is poor. That's why some of the European and the American countries are stealing the wealth of the, of the uh, backward countries or the third world countries in Africa and in different places. Stealing it. They knew that they are richer than the countries and they want to live in a super luxury style of life. And they go to Africa, countries like Chad, countries like Central African Republic, countries like uh, Niger, countries like uh, different, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, and other countries to steal the resources. We are mentioning the names of the countries. Okay. Then from there, your role is to protect or to mobilize the 
uh, resources and share it with everybody. So building the process of community building, community growth, developing, raising awareness, empowerment, advocacy, and discovery of natural resources, and then resource mobilization. This is the, manifest the community mobilization manifestation. Number four, lifelong manifestation. What, I mean, what do I mean by lifelong manifestation? Lifelong manifestation means when I die or when you die, if you contributed great work for the development of your community, people will recognize you even after you die for years and years and years and for centuries. And this happened with prophets. That's number one. Happened with companions of prophets, happened with the disciples of prophets, happened with actually great scholars, whether scientists or religious scholars, which we keep reading their books up till now. So this is because you have contributed, you have made, you have made an impact on your community. So you will be remembered forever, whether you were believing in God or not believing in God. Allah will never deprive you from being remembered by others. Your personal relationship between you and Allah is a different story. But the remembrance of the people to your contribution is what we need to see. Whether you are atheists, Muslims, Christian, Jews, whatever it is, you will be remembered by people. This is number four. The manifestation of your, your fingerprint your impact on your society. Whether you are freedom fighter, thinker, theologian, philosopher, all this. The manifestation number five is only given to certain category of people as absolutely uh, divine people. They are so sincere, actually, and unique, and chosen by the Allah, by, by, by the Creator to give them what we call the divine conquest, to be only given to them. Because there will be a special people amongst us when God or Allah has chosen them to provide them with his divine conquest. They should not give it to anybody else. So these five categories of manifestation, five types of manifestation, is there for us to measure our ibadah when we are serving and helping our community. There's nothing told to be called our ibadah is great because I stand up at night the whole night. No. Because I fast the whole day for months and months. No. Because I, I, I give all my money to the poor people. No. It has to be a fingerprint of the impact of your action to save community, to save people, to protect people, as well as to save humanity. This is actually what do we mean by ibadah. Ibadah is action. I go back for the, for the definition, which I mentioned it before. Uh, if you, uh, if you worship, to God, or if we worship God, is not transformed into a positive social services, we have seriously to question and review the reality of our belief. Belief for me is the dynamic empowering movement, energizing the different corners of our life inside this, this sprawling universe, which was created by Allah for us to enjoy it is goodness. So this is actually the five manifestations of ibadah, our ibadah on the community level. So my message now to the young people is about belief, some definitions of belief. Okay, please be with me. Bear, bear with me. Belief for me is the life movement. Is the life movement energizing? the pillars of existence created by Allah to serve human. Is the life movement energizing the pillars of existence created by Allah to serve human 
And without that, we cannot straighten up the life data provided to us by the creator to make his creations happy under the, under the leadership of the custodian of Allah on earth human being. I say it again, you yeah, have to be asserted that belief is the life movement energizing the pillars of existence created by Allah to serve a human. And without that, we cannot straighten up the life data provided by the creator to make his creation happen under the leadership of the custodian of Allah on earth, the human being. This is the first one in uh, definition of belief. We have to be certain that belief is not. Listen to this, this is very important because it's what we see nowadays. Belief is not ritual and ceremonial and ceremonies. It's not ritual and ceremonies. It's not dresses and shapes. It's not chorals and poetry. It's not body movement and chanting. It's not images and rallies. It's not isolation and remoteness. It's not wishes and dreams. It's not it's not okolalia, uh, clapping and whistling. It's not dobbing and narc narcotization. It's not slavishness and reliance. It's not abstention and dullness. It's not laziness and dependency, it's not acceptance of degradation and stalling of purposes. This is not belief. Don't tell me belief because I wear red or I wear batchy uh, clothes or I wear long hat, I don't know what you call it, with, uh, with a lot of feather in it, or I wear actually a lot of beads around my neck. This has nothing to do with worship, nothing to do with actually with, with the belief itself, not whatsoever. I say it again, it's not ritual and ceremonies, dresses and shapes, chorals and poetry, body movement and chanting, images and rallies, isolation, remoteness, wishes and dreams, echolalia, clapping and whistling, doping and narc narcotization, and slavishness and reliance, abstention and dullness, laziness and dependency, acceptance of degradation, and stalling of purpose. This is not belief whatsoever. Don't let anybody ask anybody to fool us. We have to be assertive that belief is, it is an energy and uh, radiance and light. Energy, radiance and light. This is the energy that raises the bonds of life and make them Awakening it is components inside the lazy, broken down, and dying cells of every creature. It's energy raising the bonds of life and making them awakening. It is component inside what? Inside the lazy, broken down, and dying cells of every creature. Energy giving the life back to every cell inside the individual, the creature of Allah. It is a light that lights up the pathway for the researchers of the secrets of light. When you are researching for the secrets of life, it doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. He will enlighten your way to find the truth. Believing in God or not is something else. But because you are dedicated to find the truth, he will lighten your pathway to find the way for the secrets of life. That's why you find most, a lot of people are not Muslims or researchers, and they have the greatest discovery, even they were not believers in God at the same time. If it's an energy, it's the light. Number three, it is a divine radiance. Divine radiance, R A D I N C that superpasses, or sorry, sorry, surpasses, divide radiance that surpasses what? The glittering shininess or shininess, the, the glittering shininess of stars, moons, and suns together. 
it is a divine radiance that surpasses the glittering shininess of stars, moon, and suns together. This is another, another powerful definition of your belief, young men and young women. Be assertive that belief is, look at this other, other, other dimension of belief, patience and affliction. So, and affliction, patience and affliction. Because when you start to serve a community, of course, you will face hardship and affliction. Patience and affliction. Vision and hardship. Mission and extinction. Do you think that the tyrant of this world will leave you to make your vision reality? Look at what happened to Mark Rex. Look at what happened to Martin Luther King. Look at what happened to Chi Jifara and the others. And the others, and the others, and the others. Patience and the affliction, vision and hardship, missions and the extinction, pillars and givings, spending and generosity, skies and earth, honor and the grace, burden and building, thanking and existence, justice and growth, prayers and assets. This is the concept of what belief is about. What belief is about is about. We have to be certain also that belief is what is look at my what is settled in my heart and your heart and nobody can see. And what is translated into action, community action for everyone to feel. And a man must Belief is what has been settled in your heart and being translated into action. Nobody will see in your heart what was in your heart or my heart or our hearts, but can see your action. Your action reflects the depth of the Iman. And you sound Iman, and the good Iman, the good, sorry, the, the, the depth of your belief. And the sound belief that you would like to serve and serve your mind. And this is very important as well, young men and young women. Belief has no gender. Female believer and male believer. Female uh, charitable givers, male givers, and so on. There's no gender, no race, no country, and it's not exclusive for the masters only and not for the slaves. The rich are not for the poor. The elite are not for the common. The leaders are not for the followers. The nobility are not for the servial. The men are not for the women. The sick are not for the healthy and the educated are not for the illiterate. It's not, it's not, some, it's not an exclusive club. No, it's an inclusive club for everybody. A woman being thrown into her fire because she looked in a cat, neither feeding her nor giving her support. And another prostitute was forgiven for her bad action because she gave a drink, a drink of water to a panting dog. And Allah forgiven her action and she was uh, actually granted heaven. I say this again, belief has no gender, no race, no country, and it's not exclusive for whom? For masters and not for slaves. The rich are not for the poor. The elite are not for the common. The leaders are not for the followers. The nobility are not for the self will The men are not for the women. The sick are not for the healthy. The educated are not for the elite. We have to be ascertained also that belief is the only foundation for or of our worship. And if your worship is like this platform, okay, it will be built on this. And this pillar is belief. This pillar is belief. This pillar is belief. 
belief is the only foundation for or of worship. And the creations have to look for a God to worship. This is natural instinct. Every creation, animals, birds, anything, air, water, mountains, rocks, anything, will walk, a human being, of course, angels, they look for a God to worship. This God, he himself or she herself can make it at home, sometimes make it out of sweet or wood, okay? Or can be made for them by colleagues or somebody else. Or he or she can find the true God, which was found by the young, the young Abraham, alayhi salam. He was looking at the skies, at the moon, at the stars, at the sun. Then he found the real God who was behind the creation of all of this. But you can't live without worshiping a God. If somebody tells you, I don't worship a God, he worship the void. He worships or she worships the void. Okay, so we have to live worshiping a God. Young people, I appeal to you again and again again. Worship by itself is the true manifestation of our sincere and sound belief. Worship is the manifestation of our sincere and sound belief. Sometimes, even, we look down at others, you see, and even sometimes, even, even if some are thinking that the others have bad or difficult to do, okay? We, each one of us has a belief that he or she loved or adore. Because goodness and reform might reach us sometimes through anybody, whether a believer in God or this believer in God. I'll give you an example. I'm a Muslim. Okay. I went to register an organization in the United Nations in 1993. And quite a few ambassadors from Muslim countries, they shrugged. Because the name of the organization was Islamic. And they were actually distancing themselves from it. You know who helped me to register this organization without mentioning the names? Is a non Muslim Catholic ambassador who stood up like a rock and said, I trust this organization. So you don't have to have support, somebody from your own belief. You can have somebody from another belief to support your cause. Even somebody might not believe in God. Even somebody might not believe in God at all, but has this kind of a act of goodness in his heart, on her heart. The judgment of the belief of the man and the woman before Allah is something else. Allah will judge them when he meets them on the day of judgment. But inside their heart, there's goodness. Let me say it again. Worship by itself is a true manifestation of our sincere and sound belief, even if some are thinking that the others have bad or dubious belief. Because goodness and reform might reach us sometimes through those individuals who do not believe in Allah or his messengers or his divine revelations. This is the cornerstone of human goodness, who Allah commanded the angels huh, to prostrate to our father, Adam, This is the story. Goodness could come from anyone, from anyone, whether he believes or she believes in Allah or not. Young people, we should not be arrogant. Quite often, young people will become arrogant. I don't know why. Should not be arrogant and raise, raise what? Our belief above the beliefs of others. 
our worship above the worship of other. When you are a Muslim or you are a Christian, look down and oh, see. Please pray five minutes only pray, and my prayers last for half an hour only. They don't know how to read Quran and they can read Quran. And so, no, you shouldn't. Our worship above the worship of others. Our creed above the creed of others. But we have to fraternize, be brotherly with everyone, with everyone to create this kind of fraternity or brotherhood between us. And this fraternity or brotherhood have different types. Let us discuss these different types and because you have to look at them and add more to them. Number one, love brothers in humanity, whom they share this planet with us, whether they are in China, South Africa, Latino America, anywhere. They are brothers and sisters from Adam, where all the sons and daughters of Adam and Adam was created from play. Brotherhood of nation, which is the nationals, the citizens of the same country, because we are living in the same country. We are either British, American, uh, German, Belgian, French, Saudi, Kuwaiti, uh, Nigerian, Sudanese, whatever you call it. Brotherhood of citizenship. Brotherhood of tribal on the on, on the level of the tribes, the clan, even the geographical area. What will come, what will unite us, our culture, our values, and our history of our tribes. Okay, within the country. Oh, I am from such a tribe. Like if you go to countries like uh, uh, like uh, South Sudan, full of tribes, about 70 or 80 or more than that. If you look at Africa countries, actually in Sudan itself, uh, in Darfur, I was talking to one of the people from Darfur, and in Darfur it's about 60 or 70 tribes or more, and so on, in Afghanistan, and so on. Uh, brotherhood of the, on, on the level of the tribe, the clan, areas, and so on, so on. Brotherhood of the smaller and the greater family. The greater family, which is the family. Like I mentioned, my name is Atlanta. Maybe it could be Smith or could be uh, Little, uh, Mr. Little from the family of Little. What is the family of Little? It could be extended. Long time ago, El Banna could be originally from Yemen, originally from Kuwait, originally from Lebanon. It's a big extended family. But my smaller family actually is my mother and my wife. I said my mother and my father and my sister and my brother. So this kind of relation on the base of consanguinity or the marriage relationship. But the of culture, people love the same culture. They might not have the same religion. They might not be from the same country. Culture, literature, ideology, values, morality, and manners. Brotherhood of religious dogma. Muslims, Catholic, Protestant, Rastafaria, uh, Orthodox, Jews, and so on. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be living in the same country. You might find somebody you know, Jewish from America, or Jewish, Jewish, Jews from uh, Europe, or from Africa. They still have the same religious belief. It's kind of different kind of brotherhood. Or what do you call it in uh, fraternity. fraternity? Fraternity, fraternity, fraternity. Young people, before I leave, I'll ask you seven questions again. First of all, ask yourself this. Number one. Can we present, each one of us, the manifestations of our worship and their impacts on our societies? Can each one of you stand up and tell me, this is the manifestation of my worship of my society? 
have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This number one. Can we present a list of benefiting individuals or benefiting places or benefiting communities from my worship? In a way, my contribution to develop the societies. Can I have this list to show the community? Number three, question number three, are we satisfied with our social reform achievement and what we have been doing for others? Are we? It's question number three, young people. Question number four, have we reviewed every now and then or renewed every now and then our belief and see if it's weak or not and try to strengthen it? And have we measured this kind of belief against the manifestation of our worship or not? But to review our belief, then to measure our worship against the manifestation of the worship in the society. Number six, do we have the resources and the ability? I want resources should it's not only financial resources, intellectual resources, time resources, time, time, time. Do we have the resources and the ability to push forward the wheels of community building, cohesion, and development or not? It's not a talk show. It is not a talk show and it will never be a talk show. Do we have the courage to inform others? And it others, any others about our mistakes, then redraw the roadmaps of building our social infrastructure once again and again and again. Do we have the courage to say that we did a mistake? And with the public and the common to understand that we did a mistake, we have the courage to resign our post, to resign our presidency, to resign our ministership. We can see all those يعني, corrupt individuals who are living in, 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 in countries run by tyranny. Their uh, their inability to manage their administration led to the killing of many people. But they said, no, I can't resign because those people are dead. I have to keep trying, maybe killing more people. Do you have the courage to do this? All these questions for you young people. Young people, the last question, did we learn how to deal with our partners, whether this partners is our wife at home, our colleagues at work, our neighbors, our partners in any company, in the factory, in our societies, and many other societies. Do we learn or did we learn that or not? These seven questions, young men and women, are extremely important for all of us. Because the message is for you. After after being after 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 crossing the age of seventy, I might not have enough time to take more initiatives, but I have all the time to put on the table for you challenges. And what you have seen, so you avoid doing the mistakes that you have done before or that I have done before. That's why I'm asking this. Seven questions to be the last. My last message for you, please remember that you are what is left for us by Allah. You are, young people, what's left for us by Allah. You are our prayers and hope. Please don't fail us because we will prepare the platform for you to be the champion for generations to come. May Allah bless you. Zakum Allah khair. Aid Mubarak on you, and please, my advice to my Muslim brothers and sisters to share the happiness of Aid 
with anybody uh, next to them, with them, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. And pray for all the victims of humanity from Palestine to Uyghur, to Rohingya, to Kashmir, and even the people who are actually affected by the COVID in India as well, and other people in Africa and Latin America and, 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 and. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.